Hello, my friend. Learn to love your agile mind. Do not expect yourself to be fully tamed or to be just laid back and relaxed all the time. Because, my friend, if you have an active brain and you have an engaged mind, you are not going to do that. What you do have to learn is to observe. Observe your attention, observe your inner workings, observe your self-observation, observe everything that goes on in that head of yours. Because that is your treasure. It is your treasure, but you're neglecting it or you're upset about it. You let it run loose. You let it obstruct you. You let it become something bothersome. You do that by keeping yourself believing that it is just the performance of certain tasks in the world that matters, whereas what actually matters is for you to engage with the task, take it into yourself, make it your own, and make it part of you. Everything you do, everything you encounter, everyone you meet, everyone you dialogue with, becomes part of that mind of yours, my friend. And of course, your mind is just one of the many minds that are connected in the world. But your mind, if it's an active mind, will be sometimes taken over rather than be yours. It is your challenge to own your mind, to be at ease with your mind, to be pleased with your mind, to love your mind, to feed your mind, to quieten your mind, to play with your mind, to release your mind, to let it be creative, to let it feed you, to let it show you the solutions. You have to learn to trust it. It is a long relationship a lifelong relationship, in fact, that you need to get better at. And it starts from simply acknowledging that it's special, that it's yours, that it's there all the time, and that it is what you are most identified with, probably, more than with this flesh and bones and more than with this ego that's created through your name and your roles and functions and the things people expect of you, more than any of those things, it is your internal mind, your thoughts, your capacity to link feelings and sensations and intuitions and mix it all together and understand what you're learning, what you're seeing, what you're observing, and to savor that and to learn what is good for you and what isn't so good for you. So learn that you need certain amount of loneliness, certain amounts of solitude, and that you need certain amounts of good input. You need to watch something educational every morning. You need to have a moment to meditate about what you want out of the day. And at the end of the day, you need a little time to think, oh yeah, what were the good things? What will you keep in your mind? What will you hold on to? And what is the chaff? And will you let go off at the end of the day? You need to learn to keep your mind clear and clean. And you need to learn to think 
carefully about things instead of allowing other people to feed you ideas and to follow those blindly and mindlessly. So, my friend, so much work to do to honour your mind, your brain, your thoughts, your inner world. Welcome to your inner world, which is different to mine or anybody else's. It's yours, my friend. You think it through. You decide what to work with, what to build on, what to value, what to honour, what to enlarge. Stick with the facts. Get good at checking the facts. Don't rush off with fears and imaginings that aren't actually true. Learn to be good to yourself. So observe, see what you're doing and start improving your practice. But practice every day, my friend, because it takes many years of practice to create a fertile, good, safe, pleasant, peaceful, wonderful, enlightened mind. But we can all do it. All of us have that capacity in principle. Good luck, my friend. Take care of that mind. <laughs>